Hi everyone and welcome back. Lots of great stuff happening at the garage at the moment. Lots of nice projects. Um, I just bought some parts for the Benelli. Well, yeah, for the Benelli, really. And that is my sister's MOT fail sheet. Uh, Matt's lacquer, lovely. It's exactly what I wanted. Ignition switch. I've actually got one in the post, but I'm lazy. Lazy? Impatient, even. And some fuel pipe for the CB200. So we're, we're, we're moving. We're making uh, some movement there. That Benelli could be nipped up tomorrow. Nipped up, tucked up, could be ready tomorrow uh, for an MOT. If, of course, everything else around it is fine. Shocks, pads, etc. Took my sister's car to MOT yesterday and it failed. On this right shock absorber being um, insecure, it actually says the coil spring is insecure. Now, <clears throat> I can't remember if it's this that holds it together or if there's a nut inside holding the coil spring on and then you pull it up to here. I think it is that system. There's a nut on the inside that will obviously need tightening. Now, I, I did these about a year and a half ago, so it will be my fault if it's come loose or... Maybe, I don't know, it's an aftermarket part. And it's that side. But currently, that's, that side's, the top deck is sitting, this is sitting a bit higher. So maybe there is, maybe there is something there. I think though, it means I have to take the whole front end off, I think, including dropping this. So uh, I'm gonna get online, just check the system online first and see if there's something that retains the coil underneath, like a clip. And then I'm going to see uh, where I go from there. But it's probably going to be front wheel off, jack the car, and um, nip it all up. It's the only thing it failed on. Uh, if, that, if that passes and is done today at some point, that's perfect. I'm going to at least get the Benelli uh, panels coated in the matte clear, clear um, so that we can, yeah, so that we can get all that done. Uh, yes. So at first glance, you'd expect there to be a bit of movement. I mean, it is, it is weighted, so you, you could probably jack this up. But when the tyre was on, I, I did it as well. There isn't any movement in the spring. Now, what I think there might be, it might have fallen off its top mount. In fact, I think it is off its top mount. Kind of looks like it is to me, which means I have to take the whole lot off again which is not the end of the world. Um, it's two, these two bolts here. Actually, why am I? I'm not even going through this. So finally, we're back at the garage. Um, Kim's car passed the MOT when I took it back. The spring had fallen off its carrier at the top. Now it wasn't all the way off, but it's kind of slid off to the slide, so it wasn't overly healthy, but um, it had slid off. And, and a good job on the MOT for noticing, actually. Uh, it's not something you, you could easily spot, you, you, that it's travelled on its carrier. Um, but it did, and I was hoping to prove them wrong, that it wasn't, but they were right. So, there you go. Uh, last video we saw, um, we saw this idling, or, or a short I just put up, we saw this idling. Um, actually, last video, and then a short. Um, and it is idling, but then after six, seven, eight minutes it cuts out. Which could still be kind of... A fairly normal-ish for an air-cooled engine. Maybe it's overheating a touch. I'm not quite sure. Any rattle you were hearing, it's just, you know, it's not, I just haven't nipped. I only mocked this bike up. My guess is now that I should be um, mocking this bike up. It starts on the button. It now idles. I want to actually take this out up and down for a spin um, over the next week um, and see how it is kind of traveling up and down the road. Um, I also want to reset the valves. I've ordered some parts for John's bike. This is it. This is the final few bits. I've ordered the side panels, the black rounded ones. I've ordered the pancake air filter offset. And I've ordered the lever for the choke on the bar. Um, that's going to become an everyday running triumph. And then John can do what he wants. It's welcome to stay here as long as needed. but um, Or he can sell it and buy something more modern. Whatever, whatever floats his boat, really. I think my task for today is to get... The panels for the Benelli um, dusted with lacquer. And I say dusted because I don't want any issues. I don't want it reacting to the paint. It's a different company I'm used to. And I think I've used high coat in, in the past. And, it, um, and it's bubbled my paint. So um, I'm going to dust it on. Of course, I'll be dusting it a good few times. But um, 
but yeah I'm gonna dust it on a few times to give it all a little bit of extra protection but ultimately I'm also not that not that fussed um, I probably need to leave the the gloss panels because they will be matted won't they or would they be a slightly different mat I'm not sure yet this is all working it out so actually uh, a lot of my time over the next hour or so I'm gonna have the panels all down here probably and I'm gonna be dusting them lightly with with the lacquer um, we are meant to be finished now with the rain but mm, not sure how much I trust that maybe I should hang them up under here so that we've got a bit of protection um, I showed you I bought an ignition for the bike it's a generic ignition 20 pound that I've actually got one in the post that costs like six pounds but uh, getting a good one is probably a good idea um, I'll need to mess with the um, I'll need to check and find out which one's which on here it's very similar to the one we've been messing around with John's bike actually isn't it but yeah basically uh, on click will put two of these together and that'll be the on switch for the uh, Benelli that's straightforward enough at this stage and then I have to work out how I get this um, seated in the bodywork because I'll probably need a big old washer, one on the outside, one on the inside. I might need to make one out of metal and then it will sandwich in there like that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm happy with that. That seems fine at this stage. Let's, let me get out all the panels that I'm giving a light coat on. Uh, my plan for today is at least to try and put the rear end on. It's had its bit of um, lacquer on yesterday. It doesn't look any different, but it will have a tiny bit more protection. It will have a lot more protection, actually, from basic scratches and stuff. Uh, from there, you could put a layer of wax or something on if you wanted it to have a little bit more shine, but I'm not going to in case it changes the color. So my task for today is to put the rear end on the Benelli and check things while I'm going along. Oh, look at that, that's from my CB. I'll be looking for that at some point, and it's on the floor. Oh, is the other one in there? Yeah, it's there. Look. And then, of course, uh, at some point, the CB, this CB here, I'm going to be putting back together with, I've bought new fuel line, and um, I'm going to be routing the fuel line in the way that I feel it will work properly, and then it will be a starter on the button, and I'll, I'll actually be taking it out for a spin and seeing how it goes. It don't like sitting there and idling. It gets to seven or eight minutes, and then it cuts out. It starts up straight away. But it cuts out. It doesn't feel like anything to me. Maybe valves more than anything. Right, but I'm, I'm blabbering on. Let's get this Benelli out. Let's see where we were left and what's next. So you'd be really silly at this stage not to put the bike's power on and check the lighting system before putting it all together. Let me see that this battery's got anything in it first. Yes, it does. Now what do we have on the rear? Do we have anything? So we have no basic running light. I'm not sure we have to. Do we have a brake light? No brake light on the front. And nothing obvious on the back. So does it need to be started? A weak battery. Right, this battery's not going to cut it. So we need to check now are we having bulb issues? Oh, hang on, that bulb's on. Let's see if the brake light. Ah, and the brake light's working. That's the front. The rear isn't. Probably a switch. Front is, I can see that. Front is. Rear isn't at this stage, which, which isn't a bulb issue. So let's get the rear on and nipped and tucked and uh, and the seat and bucket and stuff and then we'll get all of the, the footings in this side's kind of easy enough and then we'll look at what we need for the front panel because we need to at least get an ignition in there so the rear end's not too bad the paint's fine the problem is the underneath the paint which was always there from day one um, you know it was a messy start and the the keying of this, partly my fault, and again, partly what was underneath, is uh, is pretty rough. It needed a high build primer, really. Um, but considering what it's going to be, it's going to be a what 750 pound moped if it passes MOT and, and is correct. Uh, it's not an issue actually. There's there's a bit of a rawness to it. 
that I quite like. Uh, rear end's looking good. To pass an MOT, the seat needs to be held down. Now, legally, you can put a cable tie over it for MOT. You can just strap one around and they have to pass it. What I want to do is, if these are secure, I've done it to these in the past and they weren't secure, but ultimately, you put down um, Velcro and then you put them on here. But you do have to make sure these are secure. These do feel secure. So they would just Velcro down, maybe just one, because it has to just be secure to the lift, that's all. It can't just be rattling around. So I'm probably gonna put a little piece of Velcro on there and glue it on, and then second piece down there and glue it on, and that will be holding the seat. It's not perfect, but it will do the basic job. I've got some new sheet air filter at home. I need to work out how I do it. So the airflow comes in through here only, in through there, and then it works its way from there into here through a little gap. So if you think about it, look, there's no other gap except for the gap between the air box here and there. So I've got to think about where I'm going to be filtering this air. Um, in my head, I was going to sandwich it here, but I don't think this air box does that. No, it's quite wide, look. Um, the other thing is you could create something. I mean, it might just be that I cut it out and put four bolts in with washers. In fact, that's it, solved. I cut it out, four bolts with big washers so that it is sandwiched so it can't be sucked through. There you go, that's the fix. I had to come here and see it for it to be, for it to work. Did I seat the, um, did I seat the air box? This would be annoying if I didn't. Properly, I can't remember actually. I just nipped all the rear end down too early. Uh, looks like I didn't actually. I can do it from here, that's fine. Uh, I just need to take the bottom bolt off and ha have a bit more movement in it to see it on. I'm not sure when the middle panel goes in. It's a little square middle panel, so this obviously goes on like this. That's going to need a washer. Oh, cool. You have to just carry on. When I'm doing little bolts down here now, you have to be kind of wary, have it in mind that you're probably gonna to have to take some of these out. So next step for me is that front panel, but actually that's also the front panel where we have to think about the switch and wiring. So let me go and get the switch. I've got two switches. I need to see which one will fit nicely and how do I secure it safely. I got two switches, one was 20 pounds and um, It'll be a high quality switch, but it's a bit smaller. And the key the key looks fine actually. It is, it is a good switch. And then I bought this one. This one's a ten and a half the price, but has a much bigger bit here, which I think is closer. And um, what you wanted was for that to bolt on, you see. You wanted it to sandwich, so you so you'd screw this on and sandwich it. So what I need to do is either find or create a washer now that that fits that and it might be that I cut out a a circle there of sheet metal and then drill out or cut out the middle which is this big which is this inner size and then we sandwich it or it might be that I happen to have a washer that's big enough to do both or uh, I don't know I need to kind of work this out what what you also could have done was you could create a new one here you drill this size um, or use a step up drill uh, but ideally, if it is in the same spot, it would just be more ideal. Um, and then you need to work out what two wires offers your um, connection here. That won't be too hard. I'll use the multimeter for that. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what this will look like yet. But it needs to be sandwiched in and it needs to be bolted with this part. And I think I'm going to have to use a super glue on the threads. It's going to have to be... What I don't want is someone just being able to unscrew this. Because, at, at, you know... It will, chances are it will fall back in and then the new owner's kind of screwed. Uh, it, in, it's good in a way for theft control because it, it's gone, they can't lick it. But it's gonna be right pain. So I think I'll be gluing the threads once it's all secure. 
So this is what we were talking about. Basically, you sandwich it with washers on both sides, and it's it is a good strong fit. Um, I will be using some glue on the threads to make sure it's um, good to go. But the key in there will be fine now. Where is the key? <clears throat> Could you imagine doing all that and losing the keys? Uh, yeah. So. There they are. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that overall. Um, there's no point, I'm not gonna throw that panel on now because it's starting to rain and because I wanna I use the extra glue just um, on the thread so it's a full time fix. Yeah, that's it, I'm gonna wrap up, put it away and uh, spend tomorrow, spend all day tomorrow on it, trying to get it done and finished as best as possible. Things are bound to pop up, it might need a front, a rear brake light switch, but if we can get it close, it's a good start. That's a happy guy, man. <laughs>